Okay, next up we've got Rebecca, Rebecca O'Neill, and she's going to be talking about the continued growth of Wikipedia. <laughs> Do you... And it's on board. It's on, right. Yeah. It was an incredibly tough act to follow. <laughs> Not only half of her. <laughs> or try. Try for <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So, Martin Wa, Green Nation, Green Nation. Um, thanks very much for braving the, the second morning. This is the second time that I've done the morning slot now for Celtic Now. I'll try not to take it personally. Um, <laughs> and I was part of the crew that was uh, holding up the bar at the end of that. That was probably a bad choice. Um, so, this, so obviously, um, Irish does have a different status to, to Cornish um, and would be, I suppose, slightly more on par with how. Welsh is thought, but I thought that this might actually be kind of an interesting middle point um, for the Cornish as to how Irish actually operates, I suppose, as a social language um, isn't as alive as, as parts of, of Welsh-speaking communities would be. So this might be kind of an interesting midpoint. And it occurred to me yesterday that obviously this is, this is the Irish language experience in, in the Republic of Ireland. This is not the language experience of Northern Ireland. And while Cornish, uh, Scots Gaelic, uh, Welsh, I think Manx Irish, I'm not entirely sure, um, enjoy um, protected status. Um, Irish does not in Northern Ireland. And it's one of the reasons that Stormont um, fell apart is because uh, the DUP would not sign the Irish Language Act. So Irish within the British context does not enjoy the same status as other languages. So I think that's quite important. And I think in the year of indigenous languages, um, I think there may be a place for perhaps both Wikimedia UK and Wikimedia Community Ireland making the case for the inclusion of Irish within, within that, that protection. So what have we been doing so far? So this is, um, she's somewhat famous now at this point, Amy. Um, she is going to become, she's going to become a sticker and, and, a, and a badge in her own right. Um, so Amy, um, she won out in becoming the Irish language, um, or the Irish community mascot, uh, largely because people love porgs, uh, and <laughs> porgs are modeled on, on puffins. So Amy did actually come from Skellig Bahil, uh, that's where she was uh, captured um, by, by Shannon and brought back to metropolitan Dublin. And so uh, I included Aileen here because um, as we're starting to go into schools and things like that, you do need swag, I've discovered, and people love a button. They love a button badge. So Aileen is going to become a button badge uh, both in Irish and English. Um, so team, team Aileen, or for an Aileen, as it'll be. Uh, and Aileen means little, little bird in Irish as well. Um, so what we've done, so I, I gave a very similar... Um, presentation last year, kind of giving an update of what we've been doing so far, so this is kind of um, bringing us up to date. So we have had, as a result of actually Celtic Knot last year, we got several things activated on Wikipedia. One of the reasons that we've struggled largely is that especially if people were coming from the English language platform to Irish, they suddenly realised that the editing environment was far, far less enriched. Um, the citation tools um, were far more difficult to navigate if you were a very new editor. You actually just quite often people would just copy and paste them from English because there wasn't, um, it wouldn't automatically, the cytoids and things like that were not turned on uh, on Irish. Um, last year we got uh, Sandbox turned on. Um, so the citation tools are filled out so you actually get the different fields. You can, and they've been translated. So um, Megan and Abigail worked with a member of, um, I think, the Wikimedia Foundation staff to translate some of those things. Uh, we're kind of, we fall between two stools a little bit in that, um, to get people to engage with, with Wikipedia and, and the editing environment needs to become friendlier, but the fabricator staff are quite uh, reluctant to turn on certain tools because they don't trust that they will be updated enough. So they don't want to implement tools on Wikipedia for them then to basically degrade over time because as they're updated, people perhaps aren't translating them so they're not maintained, so it becomes, um, becomes even worse. So we're kind of, we'd like the environment to become more editor friendly, but we don't really have the capacity to maintain those tools. So how do you kind of chicken and egg that situation a little bit? Um, as of December last year, we have reached, we're over now, we're now 51,000 articles. So I was able to update that little template on, on Wikipedia that we've reached 50,000 articles, so we, we went up one. Uh, so that was, that was quite a nice uh, moment. And 
in the grand scheme of things, I suppose we float somewhere around 88th largest um, Wikipedia, which is sounds bad, but it's actually, you know, out of 300, that's not doing too badly. Um, I've also noticed that um, the awareness of Wikipedia is increasing all the time. Um, and people who come from small language communities will appreciate that those communities, the people who are quite active within them will be quite small and they will talk to each other. So, you know, the kind of word of mouth is very powerful um, with that. And as we talk to, um, so as both Megan and Abigail talk to their peers about um, Wikipedia, uh, Theresa Lynn is a very good, Dr. Theresa Lynn is a very good advocate for us. She, um, I think she was involved in the, or she was there for the launch of Twitter in Irish which was a big thing that happened in the past in the past uh, year or so. Um, up until then, whenever somebody tweeted in Irish, it would like give you strange suggestions like, is this Hungarian? Uh, you know, translate from Azerbaijani. Uh, <laughs> not the, so now it actually will, well, it'll attempt uh, to translate an Irish tweet for you. Um, so as part of that, it was a big launch because obviously Twitter um, have an office space in, in Dublin. Uh, so Teresa, she said every opportunity when she's talking to people who are interested in the Irish language, she will draw, she said she will shoehorn Wikipedia in there, uh, <laughs> it kills her. So people like that doing that, it, it's, it's hugely powerful uh, because they're respected within their language community as well. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, talking to people last night, also the impact of uh, people like Jason and uh, also Ewan being embedded within universities and cultural institutions, they go to conferences, they talk about these things and it all gets normalized. So people, librarians in particular, are going to international library conferences and they're seeing uh, Jason or um, a contemporary of his and suddenly it gets demystified and it's not as scary and alien. Um, so I am getting people coming to me rather than having to go to them. Now this as it still is quite scattered and it's obviously people who are motivated to talk to you, but it is nice not to be constantly knocking on doors and for somebody to be knocking on mine uh, occasionally. Um, I had last year the, the inclusion that we were talked about in a podcast, which is about the Irish language. This gentleman, Dara Cochet, um, highly enjoyable podcast about the Irish language, but in English. Uh, I would recommend listening to it. Uh, he's written two books about his uh, re-engagement with the Irish language, so Mother Fucklore and Crack Baby, uh, <laughs> both, in, both in English and both very uh, highly entertaining. But he has this, um, I don't know if it's weekly or monthly piece that he does in, in the journal, uh, which is quite a popular Irish uh, news site. And here he is talking about um, Wikipedia. Um, and they also have a Twitter um, a Twitter account um, for Mother Folklore, for the podcast, where they get guest curators. So Dr. Claire Murray, who's actually based in, in the UK, uh, but is a very active Wikipedia um, editor, she takes over the curatorship of that. So when this came out, she was tweeting about how to get started on, on editing Wikipedia. So it was quite a, we got quite a lot of traction about that. So it's interesting to learn um, about the, uh, the Welsh uh, Charter and the idea of kind of engaging, getting uh, students to engage with um, Irish in a more social manner, so not through the curricula necessarily. So this is quite a similar um, idea that's come out of Ireland. And I have a meeting actually with Gail Lynn um, next week to talk about how we can um, work together on this. So the Gael Brathach, um, so Brathach is, is a flag. So it's this idea that, um, you can get awarded a flag for your engagement with the Irish language as a school. It's modeled on um, the idea of um, the green flag. So when I, the green flag is quite old. I don't know if you guys have it uh, over here, it's quite old. I managed to get my secondary school to get green flags that dates me somewhat. Um, so it's this idea that you can kind of gather points or gather stars and then your school gets awarded this, this flag. Um, and generally they were kind of saying the novelty uh, or the, the kind of novel ideas that schools come up with are quite lacking. Like they tend to be the same few things that schools will always do. They'll do a Kaylee, like they'll do a dance, uh, they'll do a quiz, Ask and um, they'll do, they might get somebody in to do storytelling, like a Shana Key or something like that, or Shan Nos, which is um, also kind of storytelling and singing. Um, and that, that's kind of where they peter out. They're like, that's where they run out of ideas. So they quite liked the idea of maybe getting modeled on the, the Wikimon project that how do you get uh, schools to maybe interact with, with Wikipedia? And I'm going to be very much, I think, borrowing quite heavily from Aaron um, and his initiative. And again, it was Gail Lynn came to me. Um, I was at a, oh, I can't remember what it's called now, but is it, oh, Zenimar, which is a very large event that happens in Ireland, which is for Generation Z. So the people who come after, <laughs> so they're Xennials. 
So they're born in and around the millennium. So they're kind of teenagers. Well, they're, I mean, they're heading to 20 now, but some of them are still teenagers. Um, so people who are younger than Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> so this was a, a big conversation, an awful lot of kind of career guidance, but also people trying out stuff. And Gail Lynn had a stand and I was at a stand with um, another uh, charitable organization and they came to me wanting to talk about this. So again, it's that kind of nice reinforcement that you're not just kind of shouting into the void, saying that this is an important thing to do, that they, um, that they are you know, responding back to you. And I suppose what's important here is that um, there are schools that are all of the curriculum is taught through Irish, uh, a Gael school, but this is very much trying to target schools that are not taught, you know, students are not taught through the medium of Irish all the time. So again, you know, trying to broaden the social use of, of Irish outside of what's kind of seen as the usual places where Irish happens kind of more naturally. This is just, because I, I, I realise that obviously UK and Ireland are not that far apart from each other, but we do have differences within uh, our schooling system. So to kind of just give you an idea of um, the environment that we operate in. So we have primary education, which is uh, four to 12 years old. Um, then you have your secondary education up until 12 to, uh, to, to 18 when you leave to go to university um, or to college. And you have two state exams when you're in, um, when you're in secondary school education. So you have your junior certificate, um, which when it was first, a bit like the GCSEs, when it was first launched, the idea is that you could actually leave school with that and it would have some currency. It doesn't really, to be honest. Um, if you leave school now with a junior cert, it doesn't, doesn't really amount to a huge, a huge deal. Uh, you do about 12 to 13 subjects uh, for your junior certificate. And then your leaving certificate in your final year um, is the one that the points are calculated then to go into university or, or college or further education. And that would be seven to eight subjects that you would study for that. Uh, and Irish is compulsory the entire way. So from when you started four years up, up until you're 18, it is compulsory unless you have some kind of exemption for dyslexia or, or something like that. Um, or if you move to Ireland at a particular age, I think it's around 12, you're exempt then from having to learn Irish. Um, also to enter university, most universities will, if you don't have English, Irish, maths, you, uh, and you're leaving so you're deemed to have failed, so you won't get into a university. So you, Irish is quite critical there. Um, obviously within that, those leading up to those um, exams is quite intensive. You're teaching to the exam the entire time, but there is this year in between. So the fourth year, uh, tra transition year TY, as it's referred to. So those students that I would have met at um, that seminar um, event, they were mostly transition year groups being bussed up to Dublin to all come. So this is a year where they are encouraged to think about what they might be interested in. You know, so it's kind of preparing you a little bit kind of adult skills as it were. So you might do like, um, food safety courses and you know you get a little bit of maybe work experience uh, you might do a, so shadow a teacher or something like that or get experience within the community so they're not tied to a very strict um, curriculum within this year and increasingly uh, universities and further education are kind of requesting that certain things maybe happen within transition year to prepare st students for university before they get there and um, one of the things that has kind of come back from that is that they would like students to be introduced to the idea of citations and referencing before they get to college. So they aren't coming in raw, basically. Um, so this is the idea of kind of practical learning and applied learning as opposed to more scholarly, scholarly work. Um, so with that in mind, um, I have had some secondary schools approach me to maybe get small cohorts of students to start editing, both Wikipedia and Wikipedia. But I'm gonna talk about my experience with um, a Gale School in Dublin, um, Kalosh to Katrina. Um, the teacher actually was at that Twitter launch and heard uh, Teresa talking about editing uh, Wikipedia. And she was referring to, she used this word, an Irish word called mehel, which is kind of like a, a collective learning. It's kind of like a workshop. It's almost like, um, hacking, it's kind of that idea of kind of getting together and kind of working through something. And uh, this teacher particularly liked the idea of this kind of um, fostering of this kind of idea of metal. Um, uh, so she approached me, she had a group of transitioner students. She would have loved to, to have gotten me to work with Leaving Cert students, but really she said she had a cohort of students that she reckoned would be very good at it, but um, they were just too, too busy. You know, it was coming up to their Leaving Cert. This was around, say, April. It's just too, too close to the exam, uh, exam time. Um, she said she got me eight good students. I don't really know what the barrier for a good student is, but they, every, every school that I work with, they're like, we'll send you the best students. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, send me the worst ones, definitely. Um, they definitely seem to think that it was 
relevant and accessible to transition year students. They're not under the same pressure thinking about their leaving cert or, um, or any other exam. They're kind of in an environment where they're kind of they're being exposed to a lot of different ideas, so they may be more receptive to it and kind of thinking about it. And also kind of maturity-wise, they're 15, 16 years, so they're supposedly, they think, at a good age to maybe be exposed to ideas like this. So um, I had this group of 10 students. One of the things that I'd love to talk about, Aaron, actually, about is that I find technology is a huge barrier. Uh, an awful lot of schools just do not have the equipment to do these workshops. So when I went to Skull Katrina, they had the good old-fashioned computer lab uh, with about 15 computers, um, maybe about six of which were working uh, okay. <laughs> there was one girl who kept trying to make edits, and she would, like, if she'd shift in her chair, like a cable would come loose, and the computer would just die. <laughs> so she lost about three edits based on that. So... There is a problem where, um, when I have talked to certain schools, they're like, we just don't have, like, we would have to ask students to bring in their computers, or we would, there is uh, certain local libraries that will have computer labs as well, so there is a certain amount of logistics as well, getting students away from campus, maybe certain st schools having to do release forms and things like that for that, so there's kind of a level of admin as well. Um, so I introduced the group to Wikimedia generally, to the projects, and then specifically to Wikipedia and the translation tool and, and all the things that most of us are quite familiar with here. Um, as I said, this was kind of in a response to the demand from universities that, that students have some concept of what a reference is and how to correctly cite and, and ideas of plagiarism and copyright before they go. And there is, not as well developed as, as the British, but there is an Irish governmental drive towards digital critical skills and literacy. Um, it's in the moment, I think it's in flux. I think it ran until around now, and until about 2020, and it's going to be moving to a, a broader strategy. Um, but it is within the goals of the Irish government to have this um, included, not specifically through Irish, but just in teaching in general. The major issue that the teachers had worried about this was that they worried their students' Irish would not be good enough. Um, and this are, these are 15 to 16-year-olds who probably conducted their entire their entire uh, academic lives within Irish, and yet there was still that worry that their Irish would just not be good enough. Uh, and this is a, a pervasive thing that you will just find with every, I mean, I, I studied Irish for uh, 12 years, and I will still say that my, my Irish is very poor. <laughs> I mean, I haven't engaged with it critically, you know, since I was 18, but um, there's this, always this worry about, especially written Irish will not be good enough. Um, unfortunately, because it was done by me, uh, it was conducted through English. So these are some of the problems with the workshop that I did. And the students were absolutely fine with that. I had some of the, Megan had developed um, presentation through Irish, so I was able to introduce them to some of the vocabulary related to citations, referencing, things like that. So it wasn't a, a complete uh, berlicus, uh, as we would call it. It wasn't completely os, uh, osberla. Um, the group were quite mixed ability. And I think anybody who works with any group, uh, whatever age they are, there's going to be differing uh, levels of ability. Um, some students got straight in and wrote their first article, boom, like on their favourite artist that wasn't on Wikipedia. And that's, I suppose, the beauty of a small language Wikipedia as well. This is far more scope. You know, trying to find your niche on English language Wikipedia is a challenge to find where you're going to start contribute, contributing, but there's lots of red links on, English, on Irish, so you can start to kind of carve out your space for you. So they were writing about their favourite songwriters, their favourite artists, that kind of thing. It was quite intense, like it's, it's quite intensive having even just eight students Having just one person there was probably just about enough. If it was a larger group, you probably need a second person with you and, um, and also maybe a, a second person with competent Irish as well to maybe help them with what's the Irish for a reference. I, I, didn't, I couldn't spell it. I, I had to look it up. I now know it. It's Taggarty, but um, I didn't know it at the time. Um, how do we... And this is, this is something that I, I was discussing with people as well. Like, how do we go about scaling this up a little bit? And I think... I think Aaron's um, idea is that you do work one-on-one -on -one with teachers, and I think that's probably the way. There's this kind of this idea of, like, do we go to the teacher training professional development groups who, unfortunately, from what I've heard, is that teachers are massively oversubscribed. They have difficulty getting the teachers to come to these things anyway. We're just adding more work to them. Um, is it better to go in and foster a personal relationship one-on-one -on -one with the teacher and build their confidence and then kind of go from there um, rather than kind of lumping them with teaching materials and then just leaving them adrift without uh, any support. It does mean that being a singular employee of, of Wikimedia Community Ireland, this is probably a full-time job within of itself, and I'm probably not the person to be doing it. So there, there is an element of how do we go forward with this. Um, and I think perhaps working with Gail in with Conor Nguelga, that if we can 
kind of upskill them that they can maybe develop some of this work and, and deliver some of it through the medium of Irish, then we can step back a little bit and go. Um, this is kind of just to, to throw this in that this is something that comes up every year. That there's always kind of this hope that we'll do something for Shakhtar Naguelga and it never happens. Um, so Shakhtar Naguelga is, is a week of Irish. It happens every February. Um, and I've noticed this also with Heritage Week and various weeks, Science Week, Engineering Week. They're just massively saturated. So nearly every year, either we'll say we'll do something for Shakhtar Naguelga or a group come to us and want to do something, but it's either it's too late um, or they haven't really thought it through and they can't get a room because everything else is booked up. It's also, it's also like International Women's Day. I just find trying to get people to go to another event in an oversaturated week as it is just doesn't seem to happen. Um, the only one that we, we would love to do with this is to work with university societies. Quite often colleges will have an Irish speaking society uh, linked with Conor Naguelga and there have been instances of in the past, people doing hackathons on Wikipaid themselves, just self-motivated. Uh, and can we, you know, there, there is an element with these associations, like with uh, Sina G with Conan Guelga, that they're like, oh, that's a fantastic idea. And then that's kind of it. They don't really run with it. They just kind of go, that's great. You know, they kind of register it, but they don't run with it. And how do we actually kind of motivate them to maybe start suggesting it very actively to the societies they work with as a, a potential activity for their members to do? So this is something that kind of been floating around with me for a while, like the idea of Wikidata, and, and it did come out of um, Celtic Knot last year. So the fact that on Welsh Wikipedia, there's an amount of automatically generated content. Um, uh, we floated the idea on uh, the um, Balia, which is the, the pump um, on Wikipedia. Um, as kind of an idea. And basically, they, they were like, there isn't enough Irish language content on Wikidata to allow this to happen. You're just going to have a lot of Irish, uh, English language spam basically on Wikipedia if you do anything like that. Equally with the, um, with the Wikidata info boxes, like an awful lot of it's going to be that mixed language uh, problem. Um, thinking about getting younger people involved, obviously Wikidata is uh, the bar for entry for just translating terms is far lower because you can just keep clicking random, random item and if Irish is missing, you can just add it. Of course, we discovered that you can get really interesting things like, I don't know where was it? was it laminated nanoparticles or something was one of the ones that Abigail was like, how do you translate a laminated nanoparticle? Uh, <laughs> so there is an element of maybe filtering out the, the more difficult ones. Um, but I was thinking with school children, the idea of these kind of entry level tasks. The only issue with this is if teachers are already concerned about oversight, because obviously with Wikipedia, you can set up the dashboard, the outreach dashboard, and you can see where your editors are editing. It does track Wikidata as well, but there isn't the same level of oversight in Wikidata, so you could have quite poor level translation persisting for quite an amount of time before it's picked up by an Irish language speaker. So how do we kind of work around that? Um, but as kind of um, Doug was implying, like there is, Wikidata is probably interesting to a point, but you're not going to do an hour of just clicking through random item and just translating every single one. I mean, you could, what I discovered before is that if you know a very simple translation like footballer, you can just find all the footballers <laughs> and put in Irish footballer, Spanish footballer <laughs> in Irish over and over. And even I can manage that. Um, but there is, you know, the only good you get so far. Um, and maybe, you know, structured data on commons, the way that that's evolving, but also then populating images, better images, more descriptive images, maybe through Wikidata, that then they can see they're more bang for buck uh, if you do queries and things like that. So having a little bit more of the whiz-bang, I think Wikidata would kind of allow that a little bit. So, in conclusion, um, we do need as many allies as possible, and this is not just specific to our Irish language work. We're a very small user group um, with very finite resources, both in people and um, financial terms. So we do need as many people in our corner as possible. So we need all of the Irish language organizations to um, if not have warm feelings towards us, actively work with us in our projects. Um, there are plenty of initiatives that already exist, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are things that, to which bigger paid editing can be nicely um, uh, placed within. Um, I think Aaron has kind of shown kind of best practice and, and where we should be going with this. Um, but it's, you know, and, and you were talking about kind of the Basque and the Catalan experience as well, that we're very aware that we don't want to be reinventing the wheel. You know, we want to, you know, if there's already, if people have already developed good tools or good structures for these things, we don't need to go off and develop them ourselves. We just need to get them into Irish or, or um, 
fit into an Irish context, basically. Um, and definitely there is, there is interest, we just need to figure out how to capitalise it on, on it properly. So as always, I am always open to suggestions, pointers, good case studies and materials. <laughs> That's my email address. Please do send them to me. <laughs> Thanks very much. Anybody have any pointers? <laughs> It is a luxury of obviously working with teams and going to be doing the work of the day. So that was that rules out an awful lot of our pool of volunteers and also wanting the Navy to be able to support in the Irish language. But that's kind of the hope that maybe with um with the teachers that we're working with that they can then That's right. Yeah. So I I, I don't know if you referenced it, but I think last year um, Aaron you were talking about the fact that you kind of would work with secondary school teachers uh, students and then they would then go teach their peers. That was something like the metal format that's really what sparked uh, and, uh, this idea of, because you know the idea is you teach a skill, then that, that's the ultimate learning. Um, and I think with transition year students, because they have a little bit of luxury of time, that that's something that they can do. And they would already be doing maybe a little bit kind of, of a story, you know, um, work with the local historical yeah. society and things like that. Yeah, that's what I was more formalized. Yeah. yeah. Because in Ireland there is the Goshka Award, which is the Presidential Award, which is awards generally for charitable kind of activities and volunteering for this. Oh yes, I do provide. Yeah. 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 Yeah